You are not going to grow a faster plant by giving them more nutrients. That's like you drinking seawater thinking you're going to be healthier. It doesn't work like that. What it does work though is the two limiting things in the photosynthesis equation are light and CO2. So we start off with how much light you have. You get X from a 400, 2X from a 600, 3X from a 1000. Then a light mover, something like this. Here's a light mover, light goes back and forth. When you use a light mover like this, you can see that the light comes, eventually it makes it over here and then it goes away. What's nice about a light mover is you can put the light a foot closer to the plants and get a foot more penetration without overheating the plants because you take the hot spot off the plant and you move it down the way. So rather than doing a five by five, you might do a four by six or a four by eight and run the light down to the end, put it closer. And by the time the plant heats up to a dangerous level, the light's already gone so you never get there. They talk about how much light is lost from the top, from the bottom of the light to the top of the canopy. And there's two different ways to think about this. Think about the light like a street light. A street light casts a very wide arc, but you get less and less light as it goes. But an LED, like a little handheld LED, you can shine on a building a block away and still see the dot. Where an HPS or a gas light has this spread like this, an LED doesn't have that kind of spread. You can see where it gets bright right there. Well, it's coming back. Bah, it's moving. All right. So here's the edge of the light. You can see if I move further away, the angle looks something like this. If you've got a 4x4 four four space, well, this is a 550 <coughs> watt next light. It has all the spectrum of an LED plus all the spectrum of an HPS in one. It's 550 watts and it works like a thousand. LEDs have a little bit of magic because LEDs because LEDs have more penetration than an HPS light. With HPS, you tend to strip the inside of a plant and the flowers end up on the outside because you don't have the penetration. But with an LED, you have spectacular penetration. Together they work very well. But you can't put a 1,000 watt HPS and a 1,000 watt LED together unless you have 2,000 watts worth of plant. The problem that you run into is if you run a scrog like this and you put an LED over it, it doesn't light up the whole canopy unless you put on a light mover. So with an, L with an LED, right, I mean, with an LED, you can put the light further away. Just like you can shine an LED on a building down the block and still see that red dot because the light is collimated. Think about a flashlight hard over. You can go see as far as that flashlight can go, you turn it the other way and it goes wide, but you can't see as far. So if you have a very big hood, it's like having a wide flashlight. It doesn't penetrate as far. So you end up with, th here's the difference between a wide hood and an LED. If you have very tall plants, the light's only gonna get to the, the HPS light's only gonna get to the top of it. But if you have LEDs, they're gonna be all the way down to the floor because it has more penetration. So you have this combination of two different ways to use the light. That you gotta, it's your job to figure out how to use it. So if you have a very wide canopy and you're using an LED, of course you're not gonna get what you're supposed to get because you're not using it right. That would be like trying to drive your car with a couple of flashlights on the hood. You don't have enough light to break to see far enough. So if you try to put an LED over a wide crop, you're going to lose it. But then if you try to put an HPS with a supersized hood over tall plants, you're going to lose it. So people say, ah, LED. But they don't say that about HPS because they've kind of worked out the details of HPS. <laughs> but LEDs are spectacular. This is a next light. It has all the light, all the spectrum of an LED plus all the spectrum of an HPS. And you move it back and forth and they work really well. They also work really, really well as a supplement, as a supplement to HPS light. So if you've got a thousand watt HPS light, with instead of stripping the middles out of the plant, without increasing your plant count, and just by adding light, you can get more yield from the same amount of plants. I tell people if you've got a thousand watt overhead, get a 200 watt supplemental. 
If you've got a couple of thousand watts, you may want multiple 200s or a 400 kind of beaming across the whole crop. There really is a difference in flower production between an LED and an HPS. You can really see the difference in quality. Together, they work spectacular. But you have to use it in the right way because if you do this, you're going to get less than you're supposed to. And then I'm either going to get a customer that thinks, oh man, HPS sucks, or a customer that thinks, oh man, LED sucks. But when you tape a couple flashlights to the hood of your car and you run into a wall because you couldn't see it coming, of course you're going to blame it on the car's headlights and you're going to hate that car. But the reality was the grower wasn't using it right. There isn't any problem in the store, including the one where you hung your lights from fish wire and it falls on your plants <laughs> and breaks your hood and the bulb and the plant. It's all grower fault. Everything in this store works. Somebody hates everything in this store because they failed with it. But the reality is they probably water their plants in this display thing with broken jugs when they come in. We drop a jug, the lid cracks and it starts to spill. Oh, pick it up. It goes in the grow room because the plant's yellow, it needs in. If a plant's purple, it needs mag. If it has tip twist, like drawstring, it needs calcium. These are simple things that plants need, and the answers are pretty simple. Usually it's because when a plant needs something, it's kind of one of a couple of things. You put the light too close. When I talk about putting the light too close, this is what I'm talking about. A hood requires a certain spread. You saw with the LED as I moved my hand in that there was an angle of the light. You have to make it such that the spread covers the whole area. So if you've got a 600 watt light, the spread has to be out over the 4x4 area. The next thing to consider is a plant cannot grow with 101% light. If you give the plant 101% in a perfect garden, you've got too much light for the rest of the equation. You have too much light for the photosynthesis equation. Your plant stops growing. It bleaches. It whitens. The leaves, the flowers, it can't. These are usually like in the middle of the garden right underneath the lights. You can't get 101% light in plant growth. So if you put your plant up against 100%, she has nowhere to go. So not only do you have to pay attention to the spread to make sure it's getting to the edge of your crop, you have to make sure that the plant is still another foot or two away from that or she can't grow. So quite frequently you'll get people that come in with the cutting and their 1,000 watt light is over the plant like this. Not only is that plant incapable of growing anywhere, you're never going to get anything out of it no matter how many nutrients you feed it. So what I try to show you guys is matching the hood to the shape of your garden. If you've got big plants, you're going to need a focused hood with more penetration. If you've got a wide garden like a scrog, you're going to need a bigger hood with greater width and less penetration. Because if you try to put a focused hood over a wide garden, you're not going to get what you're supposed to get.